Hello friends, today we are going to discuss here about uh, NEET PG MCQs. This is very very high yield MCQs. These all five. True statement about neurogenic shock. Tachycardia, patient has cold and moist extremity. It is due to parasympathetic cutoff or mostly due to high spinal injuries. All options in front of you, try to answer in comment section. If you want to solve MCQ, at least you have to know all other options are not answer so they are asking true statement tachycardia most of the shock we find tachycardia but in neurogenic shock we find bradycardia tachycardia is rule out patient has cold and moist extremity most of the shock there is cold and moist extremity but in neurogenic shock we have hot extremities it is due to parasympathetic cutoff neurogenic shock is mainly due to sympathetic cutoff mostly due to high spinal injuries so one option is remain so guys if you study like this then only you are able to score excellent rank otherwise if you learn mcqs no use so it is sudden loss of autonomic tone due to spinal cord injury disruption of descending sympathetic pathway leads to vasodilation and decreased vascular resistance Patient has bradycardia and not tachycardia. Extremities are warm in these cases. Now, shock which is associated with acquired adrenal insufficiency. Addison disease you find adrenal insufficiency. So which type of shock you see with acquired adrenal insufficiency, cardiogenic, septic, neurogenic or hypovolemic. What is the most common type of shock worldwide? Hypovolemic. What is the most common type of shock in trauma? Hemorrhagic or in other word hypovolemic. But here MCQ they like to ask shock which is associated with acquired adrenal insufficiency that is septic shock. Let's discuss. Septic shock. Sepsis activates the endogenous release of cortisol. Cortisol form both pro and anti-inflammatory mediators to restrict inflammation in infected tissue. Other factors like including vascular or ischemic damage, inflammation, apoptosis within the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, drug that alter cortisol metabolism may cause adrenal insufficiency. Now, very, very, very high yield. Red oncogene is located in 10Q11, 10P11, 11Q10, 11P10. What is the single best answer? So many times very high yield MCQ in exam they like to ask. Red oncogene seen in MAN2. Okay. Answer is 10Q11. Point mutation in red gene leads to multiple endocrine neoplasia too. In exam also they like to ask all of the features are MAN1 except all of the features are MAN2 except. This mutation lead to constitutive Activation in protein kinase which leads to continuous cell activation. Cytogenetic location 10q 11.21 which is the long q arm of chromosome 10 at position 11.21. Most microsurgery is usually not done for melanoma, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, Merkel cell carcinoma. So guys you have to answer which one is the correct and why answer is not in melanoma most microsurgery is usually not done is a technique in which cancer removal is done with the minimal defect in the tissues 2 mm margin of skin is removed and submitted for frozen section till a tumor free margin is achieved melanocytic atypia is not properly analyzed in frozen section therefore this technique is less applicable in melanoma now this type of clinical mcq is gold stuttered in exam may be probability to you receive such mcqs 26 year old woman after severe bleeding due to pph what is pph postpartum hemorrhage develops acute renal failure serum glucose is 150 milligram per deciliter sodium is normal potassium is 6.5 milliequivalent per liter what is the normal value of potassium 3.52 5.5 so 6.5 is high and bicarbonate 50 milliequivalent per liter what should be the next step in the treatment so guys this is a case of renal failure or we can say hyperkalemia patient 
so option is iv 0.9 percent normal saline 100 ml of 50 percent glucose with insulin calcitonin magnesium sulfate so guys uh, if you give normal saline NACL that means it worse the acidosis so this is contraindicated IV calcitonin used to treat hypercalcemia magnesium sulfate used in eclampsia okay eclampsia so this is also not useful so remaining option is left 100 ml 50% of glucose with insulin is the answer to reduce potassium if here in option there is a calcium in option then you choose calcium why calcium prevent arrhythmias firstly you have to save the life of patient so calcium and uh, this insulin and glucose drip is an option then go with calcium but that option is not in this mcq so answer is 100 ml of 50 percent glucose with insulin in hyperkalemia bringing back the potassium level below 5.5 is important to prevent arrhythmia GI glucose insulin drip drives potassium back into the cells from the plasma and decreases serum potassium. NaCl will worsen the metabolic acidosis further. Calcitonin is used to treat hypercalcemia. So guys, if you study like this, then only you are able to score excellent rank. And my aim to provide such more MCQs on this channel uh, which helps you to score excellent rank in NEET PG 2024 exam and if you want to uh, take subscription of 800 one-liners from 8 subject and 600 recorded videos of 5 minute subscription program then fee of that program is 5000 I provide you and uh, how to take subscription details available in description of this video thank you